everybody welcome back to my channel and another tutorial um, the bag we're working on today and I know it's late it was released a couple weeks ago um, I've actually been waiting on fabric for it um, the fabric still hasn't arrived so I'm going with a different plan for for my plan for this bag so today we are going to make the Harmony Bag by Shambhala Designs. I'm super excited about this because of all of the fringe. I love a fringe bag. I mean, I, I don't think I've had one since the 80s, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to do this. There's going to be some new techniques in here, which I'm really excited to learn and share with you guys. Um, yeah, so let's first go through what pieces you do need for this bag um i've been cutting all morning so let's go through the hardware first um i'm doing all mine in antique brass so you're going to need lots of rivets uh, you're going to need a slider i'm actually using a wide slider because i'm doing my bag in leather so i want to make sure that that crossbody strap is going to be able to fit through that good you're going to need two d-rings you're going to need number five zipper tape and two uh, zipper pulls. Oopsies. Four purse feet. A, I'm using a metal zipper end. You can make your own zipper end if you wanted to. And I'm also, I'm going to be doing my connectors a little bit different and I'm going to be putting these on a, uh, the end to hide the raw edges there. So um, these are just the one inch uh, strap ends from Emmeline bags. And that's really all you need for hardware. It's very minimal hardware bag. Um, interfacing all of my cotton pieces are fused with uh, SF 101 medium woven interfacing. Um, I'm using Pellon Flex Foam Foam as my stabilizer. Um, I am attempting to do this in a leather that I bought from Tandy Leather a few weeks ago. It is a two ounce leather. Usually I haven't played with leather that much, um, but I've heard that it's good to be two to three ounce. This one feels a little bit thinner, even though it is two ounce. So I've actually backed within the seam allowance um, on the main back piece and the gusset pieces uh, with Decaville Light just to give it that extra um, body to uh, just to make it stiffer. I don't want it to collapse upon itself. So I have that on my gusset. I have Decaville Heavy on my bottom piece for the exterior. The front piece I'm just leaving with foam. It's going to have a lot of body with the uh, fringe and everything on the front. And then, of course, my panel is going to be cotton, which I will show you right now. Okay, so you are going to need to cut out. And excuse, I haven't trimmed my woven interfacing yet. Um, your accent panel for the front. I'm going with this awesome cowhide looking print. This is just uh, quilting cotton from Fabricland. Uh, you're going to need well, two lining pocket pieces. Two lining panels. So I'm using the same um, for that contrast on the outside. I'm using that for my lining as well. Two lining gusset pieces. Show you all the um, a lining bottom piece, uh, two lining zipper panels. I think that's all the lining pieces, and then we're into the leather. And this is the leather that I bought from Tandy Leather. You can see it's really thin. It says it's two ounces. It definitely has an odor to it. So, but it actually feels amazing. So I have stabilized this with Decaville Heavy within the seam allowance. So that's the bo one bottom piece. Two gusset pieces. And again, I've backed these with Decaville Light just to give them a little more stiffness. One back panel, which I've also put deck of a light on. These will also be attached to foam. Um, I do that later on in the pattern. So um, yeah, I've gone overboard. So these will have deck of a light and foam as they're interfacing. A long 
piece for your crossbody strap. So you can see how thin it is there. I don't know. I'm curious to see how it sews up. I guess we will find out. Um, I cut out a scrap piece because uh, I'm going to do my zipper overlay method. It's slightly different than how she does it in the pattern. So again, that's something you'll go into my playlist, my Bay Makers 101 playlist, and you can check out how I do my lining zipper overlays. Two exterior zip panels. One piece that will be cut into two for our crossbody connectors. two lining top of the gusset pieces I am going to do the piping so I got my long piping piece um, again our, our seam allowance is a quarter of an inch I believe so I've cut this to one and a quarter and I'm going to be using my quarter inch um, it's either quarter inch or it's three eighth piping I'm not sure so you'll need that uh, two lining top panels. All right, and then we're into the exterior of the bag. So this is the top band. And these are the exciting pieces. Oh, Coco's going crazy. So we have our fringe aid. Look at that fringe. Now, I ended up choosing leather for this. I'm sh you can do it in any non-fraying fabric. Just keep in mind that the back side of the fringe is going to show. So I know that some faux leathers or some vinyls have like a black backing, that would be good. But uh, I mean, most have that white uh, backing, which would be okay. Uh, just keep in mind when you're cutting, I did not mark my fringe on the back. Usually I draw them out and I would cut them. But those pen marks may show if you're not dead on with your accuracy. So when I cut out the pattern, I laid the pattern down and I actually, I uh, took my rotary cutter and I actually just cut through the lines while I was cutting this to get my fringe. I mean, the fringe doesn't have to be perfect, but ooh, it's so nice. But yeah, I chose to, I think with this one, I would choose to use a leather fabric uh, just for that reason. Uh, same with cork fabric. Sometimes it's the same color, sometimes it's not, but I'm going with leather. So you need one fringe A piece. And then your last fringe B piece. I just love fringe. Look at that. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's all the pieces that you need to make this. There's actually not that many. Um, the fringe did not take that long to cut out. I thought it would, but it, it really didn't. I said, I just took my, I have a small Ulfa rotary cutter and that's what I used to cut my fringe. And I actually, you can see here, not showing the pattern pieces because we're not supposed to, but you can just see, I just cut it straight through my fringe lines here. So um, yeah, I didn't use my good rotary cutter on that because I didn't want to dull my blade too much, but I used my small one to do that and it seemed to work good. So all the interfacings I used, um, I actually now do sell on my website. So if you are looking for SF 101 Flex Foam, Decaville Light, Decaville Heavy, um, pop on over there. Um, I have everything by the meter already in stock. I just got to ship it out. The um, And then if you want bolts, uh, it just takes a couple days for me to get the bolts in and then I ship them to you right away. So yeah, check out my website. I'll put a link down in the uh, description uh, if you want to check that out. Also, if you would like enough interfacing just to make this bag or any bag, shoot me a message on my Facebook page or send me a message through here or email me at info at beansbagsandhandicraftsco.com and we can work out that I can make you an interfacing package. So yeah, just let me know. I will definitely do that. Anyways, um, yeah, so again, my machine is a Titan TN1541S industrial machine. I'm using a uh, Text 70 nylon polyester bonded. I never know which way the words go with that um, thread. Um, and I'm using a, I'm putting a brand new needle in because I am using leather and I don't want to wreck it. A size 20 net leather or size 20 needle is what I'm going to start with, with this and make sure that it goes well. So without th further ado, let's get on with the tutorial. All right, let's get started on this. Now, I just want to pre-warn everybody. If this video sound is a little bit off at all, I am trying a brand new microphone that I got. It's not 
a lanyard microphone. It's a, it's actually on my desktop here, so I may be adjusting it through the video. So if at any point it sounds too quiet or whatever, I apologize. This video has kind of become the testing out the mic video as well. Okay, so we've got everything interfaced. We've got everything cut out. I went ahead and I did my crossbody strap already. I am... One thing I am doing different with the crossbody strap is I'm not putting the swivel clasps on it, so I didn't mention that in my hardware list. Um, but because this is the only strap on the bag, mine I'm going to make so it's not removable. So um, I'll show you how I install it the rest of the way um, at the end of the tutorial when the bag is complete and we put the strap adjustable strap on. So all I did for now was put on my um, my slider. So you can put that aside for now. I also went ahead and made uh, my piping. Um, I said I'm using a really thin leather. Um, I did mention that I was going to try a size 20 needle with this leather. I actually went down to an 18. Um, this leather that I got from Tandy Leather is a size uh, 1 to 2 ounce. I honestly think uh, 2 to 3 ounce would be better. So we will see how this bag turns out with this. It still feels great and everything. It's just a very, very thin leather, but I did go down to a size 18 needle, still using my Tech 70 thread. Um, but uh, usually I use a size 20 needle when I'm making my bags, but this one I had to go down with. So take your piping pieces and you can put them aside for now as well. Um, if you need to learn how to make a crossbody strap or uh, make the piping. I do have uh, instructional videos on that in my Bag Makers 101 playlist that you can reference. I will try to remember to put that either in a little pop-up up top here or um, in the description below. So let's uh, move on to the next step. So I said I already cut out my fringe. Um, I did it as I cut out the pieces. Again, the pattern says to mark it out. I just cut through my paper as I cut it, I found that to be the easiest. So go ahead and do that. And then we're going to take our top bands. We need to make some marks. Uh, the pattern wants you to transfer the this line here, the margin line, onto the pattern piece. So what I've done is I actually, these are cut on the fold. Uh, you can definitely keep it on the fold. I actually printed two and uh, put them together so I could do it all in one piece. I've also gone through and on this dash line I've put just taken my X-Acto knife and I've put little dashes in there and I put holes in where the rivet marks are and this is why. So I'm going to lay this down on top. I'm just going to put a couple, let's see if you can see this a little better. I'm going to put this back on here just to hold it in place so it's where it's supposed to be because we're going to do some drawing on the wrong side. Okay, so where all those little marks are that I did, I'm going to take my pen and I'm just going to go through and mark them. And then we're going to do like a connect the dots thing to draw in this margin. It's there. You could also measure up. I think that's probably that's a quarter of an inch and do it that way. This just helps because it's curvy and how I prefer to do it. And then I punched the holes where these rivets are and I'm just gonna transfer those hole or those marks here so I know where I'm punching my rivets later on. And I'm just using a regular ballpoint pen at this point. Okay, that's the last one. Because it's not gonna go through the other side. If you are using something that it could then definitely use a an erasable pen. So now I'm just going to go through and make these a little darker so I can see them. This one didn't come through very good. Okay, so we got our rivet marks, and then what I'm going to do, I actually have to trim this down a little bit. Connect the dots for that line so I know where I'm going. So, and then up this side.
Okay, so now we have that margin all in place. Ignore the other stuff from when I was drawing out my pattern pieces because the little dots where I have for my um, rivets that we will do later. So I have that uh, to look at and then the margins. So then what we want to do is we want to take our double sided tape. I'm just going to double check top band on margin that is a pattern piece. And I glue a double sided tape as seen in the image. Okay. I'm going to add the double sided tape along the line. That I'm not used to working with the leather and the glue really really likes to stick to it. So you want to put the double sided tape just above that line. So we're going to be folding along that line. want to do is where the curves are, which I'm going to take the tape off so I can see the line. And leather is so different than vinyl to work with. And then on these curved edges here, we don't want to cut through the line, you just want to cut to the line, about a quarter of an inch in. And that's just going to make it so we can go around those corners a lot easier. Like so, and here. We're going to fold along that line that we made up onto the tape. And we want to get a nice curved edge. So one thing you want to make sure is those little snips that we did here, you want to make sure they're not within this fold, if that makes sense. Otherwise, you get like these little sharp little corners. But see, when we go right along it, how nice and smooth that is. So you just want to keep folding it up. All the way, that quarter of an inch-ish. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that and then we will come back. Okay, I've moved my mic to the opposite side of the table. I found there was a lot of feedback coming, so hopefully the segment is better. Again, I apologize. I am testing my new mic with um, this video as well. So hopefully it gets better and better <laughs> as we go. I found that it was picking up the shower sounds and everything in that last segment. So hopefully um, it doesn't pick up the background noise as bad now. All right. so. We have folded all those edges up. I found it a little hard. Uh, it's recommended to kind of get something pointy in there so we can get a nice um, pointy corner there. I was not successful, so I have a little bit of a squared corner, which I think is going to be just fine. Um, it'll look fine. I also went ahead, it's not in the pattern to do this, but where we made the marks for the rivets, I just went and took my, my hand press punch and I punch those holes so we have a guide for where they will go when we get to that step. Um, you don't have to do that. Uh, you could do that um, later on if you wanted to. This is just how I think it's going to be easiest for me. Okay, so the next step is you want to take your fringe A piece. So it's this one that looks like this, the one that is longer on the sides. And we want to put that centered on our main panel here. We want to clip those together. Make sure it's somewhat centered. So I think we want them to be about, I've cut my corner off a little bit there, but that's okay. About half inch from the edge, it looks like. It 
should go about. So it looks like this is going to get a little bit thick here. I do not have my foam um, on on the back of my main panel yet. That will come in a little bit. So we are pretty much going to be going through three layers of vinyl or leather or cork, whatever non-fraying fabric you are using, and then your front panel as well. So it might be good I'm, I'm using a thinner leather for this. I think it'll make great fringe. So it looks like that. And then what you want to do is take your other, your fringe B piece, which is the one that's kind of shaped like a V with the shorter fringe. And you want to put that on there as well, nice and centered. So now it looks like that, all fringy. And then we want to take that top panel that we just did and add it to the layers here. And this one should go right to the end of the fabric. Just make sure you're nice and centered. so make sure so this is what we've got so far so I'm going to take this over to my machine and we're not going to stitch along this top here we're going to stitch along that edge that we just folded up with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and it's going to hold all those layers together and then we'll come back and I'll show you what to do next. All right so that's what that looks like. I'm testing myself by using a very much a contrasting uh, thread. Testing my talents I guess but I think it's going to look great. Um, I didn't bring mine right to a point here because I did do a little square there so I did like a stitch there and just followed the line of that. So that's what the front panel looks like. So then what you want to do is you want to take these clips off and we want to reduce the bulk. This is very important, especially if you are going to be using a domestic machine because, I mean, going through that, you probably felt the, uh, the layers. So you don't want to cut through this top panel, but you do want to trim these three layers. So the cotton one and the two fringe ones. Uh, down to about a quarter of an inch and then just trimming in behind it. I'm actually not even doing a quarter of an inch, I'm just trimming. Into it like So when we go to do the top, you just have that top layer and then we have all this hanging down here. So now what the next step is, you want to take your front main piece, your back piece, your bottom and your gussets and you want to attach those all to foam. So go ahead or whatever interfacing you are using. So go ahead and uh, baste all your pieces to foam or fuse them, whatever it is you're doing. And then we will come back and uh, we will work on the piping. All right, so we have all of our pieces attached to the foam. I am changing from what I said in the introduction a little bit. I was, it's not in the pattern, but I was thinking about putting purse feet on the bottom, but because of how the bag's shaped and how small the bottom piece is, I have opted not to do the purse feet. So please disregard that I said you need a purse feet because you don't. <laughs> all right, so now we are to the point of putting on piping on the front and the back panels. So what you want to do, I'm not that organized today, I apologize, where's my paper go? Okay, 
So the piping is going to start and what would one of my videos be without Miss Coco saying hello? <laughs> I think there's a delivery truck and she just hates that delivery man. So I apologize for her barking in the background. All right, so we want to take our choco or marking pen and just mark two inches from the top of each piece. It's also uh, shows where that is on the, um, oh my gosh, I'm tongue tied today, on the uh, pattern pieces. Okay, and then you wanna grab your piping that you made. Again, if you wanna learn how to make piping, you can go to my Bag Makers 101 playlist and I show you how I make my piping. Um, you can also, of course, uh, use pre-made piping as well big long strings hanging here. I'm just going to cut that away. So what we want to do is we want to take our piping and we're just going to put it at that line like so. For now we're going to actually move it out of the way in a little bit but uh, if you use the one and a quarter um, piece of piping you should have pretty much a quarter of an inch which is our seam allowance which is perfect. And just start clipping it all the way around. When you get to these corners, you can see how this doesn't want to go around. So what you're going to want to do is uh, just do the stitch line on that corner, just to do a few snips, about just under a quarter, or I guess it's more like an eighth of an inch in, just to help it work around. And you can see how with that, it goes around that corner really nice. See how it just kind of hugs that corner once with those clips in. And it's right across the bottom. again so I am going to do little snips so actually this leather weight is not as bad as I thought it was going to be it's a little bit stiff but that's more the kind of leather I am using but I thought it was going to be too thin but I think it's going to be good it would actually probably be a really good weight for uh domestic machines to be able to sew through. I think my Juki 2010Q would handle it pretty good. The three to four ounce, or the two to three ounce, I would probably only do on a industrial. But this isn't bad at all. Okay, so I'm gonna trim this at that line. Okay, so now what we're going to want is for this piping to kind of go off into the side. So where that line is, we're just going to kind of push this. See what I'm doing there? We're just going to push this out like that so it's easing its way out of the seam allowance. See? See, there's my line. And then I've just pushed it so it kind of does this little curve so it goes out of the seam allowance. And then where we started here, we want to do the same thing. We want to take this and we want to push it just like that and clip it in place. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to put my piping onto my front piece. And then I'm actually going to take the camera over to my machine and we will attach the piping onto the bag. Okay, so hopefully the mic works good here and doesn't pick up too much of the machine noise. I have new lighting, I have a new mic. You guys have to let me know if this is better. I think this angle is really good to be able to show you what I am doing at the machine when I'm doing it. So yeah, keep me posted, let me know. I'm trying to learn new things and how to make everything better so your feedback would be amazing. 
Okay, so I've put on my zipper foot and um, we're going to baste the piping onto, uh, onto the back panel right now. So I'm going to start just a little bit above. The piping starts here. I'm a little bit above making sure that the piping is veered to the left. And we're just going to go over it. You're going to be following the line of the bag, not the line of the piping, because the piping is veering off to the right, right here. So you're going to go across it, and then a quarter of an inch with your uh, foot here, right against the piping. And mine is cut uh, with the quarter inch seam allowance, and my zipper foot is a quarter inch long. So as long as I have my piping right or my zipper foot right along that piping, I am good to go. And then just follow all the way down and around. I'm almost following the line of stitching from when I created the piping. Go around the corners. Sometimes using an awl around the corners if it's not sitting nice and flat helps. So you don't see your fingers. This leather is actually sitting perfectly flat, so it's not an issue for me this time at all. side. You're going to keep following the line of the main panel and we're going to go over top of the piping where it's veered off. So you're going to keep going straight. Don't follow the line of the piping. You're going to be going over top of the piping and keep going and backstitch. Trim your threads and it looks like this. You can see how I stitched over top and it's veered off to the left. On the back you can see more how it's veered off here. And then you're going to do that very same thing with the front panel. Make sure you're not catching your fringe into the seam because you don't want that to be in the seam. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then uh, we will go back to the table. Actually I might just bring the panels here. We'll see. Okay so we have all of our piping done and it looks fantastic. What I'm going to do is I've grabbed my connector piece and I've put a line, don't know if you can see it, down the center and I'm going to grab my double sided tape, this isn't the double sided tape I really want but that's okay, I usually use a little bit thicker and we are going to, I'm going to put some down because I'm using the quarter inch tape, I'm going to put a line of tape down either side of that line. And just like we do with straps, we're going to fold into the center. We're not going to do a double fold. We're just going to fold these into the center line like this. And then same with the other side. Again, if you don't want to use double-sided tape, you can definitely use clips to hold it in place. So we have a one-inch strap. The first thing I'm going to do, because I've changed up my foot and everything, this is my, this is terrible. I take a, a, a piece of whatever material I'm working at and I fold it so there's four layers. And this is how I double check my um, tension because on this machine, my tension likes to uh, change with different materials. So I just want to make sure that my tension is good and you can see I did that bottom line my stitches look great they even look great on the other side so this is my messy uh, checking to make sure that my tension hasn't been thrown off okay so now what we're going to do is down these folded lines or edges we're going to do an eighth of an inch seam allowance down each side Okay, and then you want to take this, now that you've got your top stitching done, you want to fold it in half and cut it into two pieces, like so. 
And then you're going to take your D-rings and put them into the middle. I'm doing this a little different than the pattern because I'm actually not folding these under. I'm going to put a um, strap end on the end of this and then I'm going to rivet it to the bag. So I'm not going to stitch it to the bag at all. I'm going to rivet it to the bag. So then I'm going to just base those raw edges together. Like so. Do it with the other one. And then when I go back to the table, I will put my strap ends on to these. I like the look of having the strap ends on the end of my connectors here. I just think it adds a little more bling and then they'll be riveted on. So you can put those aside for now. And then what you want to do is you want to take your two gusset pieces and your bottom pieces, bottom piece, you're going to match up the raw edges on one side. And I'm just going to double check that it is a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I've kind of jumped ahead in the pattern a little bit because I'm going to go put all of my um, rivets and everything on after this. Okay, so the gusset pieces we are sewing on with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So it's a little bit bigger than the regular seam allowance. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that this seam here is pointing this way towards the bottom. Like, mine's a little bit thick like that. And then we're going to top stitch along here to hold that seam in place. With a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. like that and the seam is being held in place and then you want to take your other gusset piece and do the same on the other side right sides together So it looks like that. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the table and off camera, I am going to, um, well, if you're putting purse feet on, you could do that now. Again, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and punch through these holes all the way through and uh, set my rivets in there. I'm going to go and put my nameplate on here. And I am also going to... Um, put my one inch strap connectors on the bottom of this and then as per the instructions place these onto the gusset um, but I said I don't sew them on I just rivet them on but on the back make sure you use a little scrap piece of decoval light behind the rivet not decoval light decoval heavy behind the rivet just to give it that extra stability so it won't pull through so I'm going to go ahead and do all that off camera again I'm just blinging all the, up the bag and putting my strap connectors following the measurement um, the measurements in the pattern as to where to place the strap connector and put her on um, and then when we're all done that we'll come back we will put the gusset and the main panel and back panel together. Okay, so I have gone ahead, I added all my rivets along the top, I added my nameplate on the bottom, and I've put my connectors on here. So this is what I was saying, I left the bottom raw, and rather than sewing them around, I riveted them in place with a piece of Decoville Heavy on the back as well. So 
those are all ready to go. So now it's to put them together. So what you want to do, I've already done this, is you want to find your centers of the bottom pieces. And I've, I just do little snips. And you want to do centers of the main panel and the exterior panel. And then we're going to put them together. So lay your exterior panel, or your main panel, up like this. You're going to put them right sides together. I don't know how much I can show of this at my machine here. Match up those center pieces. Center mark I mean, and clip. I usually like to put three clips just to hold that in place. Now the front part's gonna be a little tricky because you want to make sure none of this fringe is gonna get caught into your into your seam allowance. So you kind of want to brush it all to the side. Uh, bring your top ends together and clip them together. Now you will still have this sticking out, um, the piping, still leave it sticking out for now. We can trim that. I like to trim it once I've done this seam. So, And then just but make sure you're matching it with the lining or the main panel, not with the piping that's sticking out as you put them together. And clip it all the way down. Now when you get to this corner, actually I think it's going to go pretty good. Yeah, if, if it's not fitting very well, you can go ahead and snip into the corners just like we did with the piping to make it so it would fit better. Do this other side here. You can see how nicely this is going to fit right in there. But again, if it's not wanting to fit in there, if it seems like the gusset piece just doesn't want to, make you can do those little snips, no problem. I'm getting lucky here, so I don't have to. I don't think. finished clipping I just realized I have to change into my zipper foot again as well because we are sewing by piping we don't want to go over the piping so I'm gonna go ahead and do that finish clipping this change my piping in, into my zipper foot and then I'll show you how I'm gonna sew this all on okay so I have my zipper foot on I have it clipped all the way around now usually I would sew this with my main panel against the machine bed but because I want to follow the piping line that we have on the back I'm actually going to sew with the gusset down so I can follow that piping line Oops, make sure I got my threads out so we're going to sew the seam with a three quarter or a quarter of an inch seam allowance and when I get to where the um, piping is I'm going to follow that quarter inch line where we basted the piping on just to give myself a good guide as well as feeling for where the piping is you don't want to run over the piping and keeping your hand inside here helps a lot to make sure your uh, fringes are all where they're supposed to be so coming down and just following that line And that should hug it really nice and tight against that piping. My foot is sitting right up against the piping too. I can kind of feel it with my hand on the inside and here. So the 
take a look, kind of pop your bag out, make sure you like what you see. Um, because I'm using a contrasting thread when I made it, I want to make sure that I can't see that thread anywhere. And you can see I can right there. So I'm actually going to go back over that and go a little bit tighter on those corners. Looks like I got it that time. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the back panel. You're going to do the same thing. You're just going to put it on like this. Go all the way around. Turn your bag out and the exterior part is done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install the lining zipper pocket. Um, I'm not doing it the same as the pattern. I'm going to do it like I do with my overlay method, which is in my Bag Makers 101 class, if you want to check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then um, we'll come back and we will start working on the zipper panels. Okay, so what do we have done? We have the full exterior of the bag done. The piping looks excellent. So this leather actually ended up being really nice which is good loving the fringe um okay so you put the exterior to the side um i went ahead already and i did my uh interior zipper pocket again um i've actually haven't done it the way it is done in the pattern or or the length that they have um this is uh my current preferred mess uh method that i love and it's uh the zipper overlay method um, I do have a tutorial for that in my Bag Makers 101 playlist. I will try to remember to uh, keep it in the link below. Again, I apologize for my barking hound dog in the background. <laughs> um, another thing I do different is make sure you leave an opening in your, in your uh, zipper pocket uh, for turning. So in the pattern, you turn the bag through an opening in the bottom of the lining, which we are still going to do. But we're going to seal that up with the opening in the pocket. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my zipper. We're going to work on the zipper panel. And we want to turn these raw edges. I'm using zipper tape uh, down. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn this down to a 90 degree angle. I think that is. So it's like that. And then you're just going to baste it so it stays like that and do the same equally on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead in my machine. I'm going to do that. Again, you just kind of fold it down upon itself like that and then baste right along the raw edge there equally on both sides. So we'll have something that looks like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we're going to build that zipper panel. Okay, so... I have done that. Put the zipper aside for now and pull out your two exterior pieces and your two lining pieces for your zipper panels. Now you want to make sure that they are all the same length. If they're not, mine are pretty close, we can trim them up, but we're going to want them to meet up. So the first thing we want to do is on the back side of these, and I said I may be doing this a little different than the pattern. Uh, this is the way I like to do my zipper panels. But on the back of each, I want to mark in uh, one inch. Oops, if my pen would work. There we go. Actually, yeah, one inch from each side. And then again on the opposite sides, one inch in, draw a line. Okay. And the 
then take some double-sided tape. We'll do one side first and just on the inside of that line, place some double-sided tape. Like so, and on the opposite sides as well. And then what we want to do is remove your double sided tape and you want to fold each end into that line. So we're folding in about half an inch on each end. And this is just to hide those raw edges. And then on the lining pieces as well. The lining pieces you could probably take and press them if you wanted to rather than taping them. But I find tape faster and easier. My iron's cold right now, anyways. done that right they should all still be about the same length so we'll start with this one they're the same length so start with one of the panels and then you're going to mark with your lining panel right side up I'm going to mark in at that half inch mark on the outside so I'm just going to put a small little mark right there where the half inch mark is. Take some more double sided tape and I'm going to put it along the top, the side that we just made that mark, like so. Take off the tape and then with the zipper pull closing this to the left is what we want. So we can open this up. I've also done a few little tack stitches on the end so my zipper pull doesn't go off the end. But what you're going to do is you're going to take this curved mark here that we did and match that to that little mark that we just did at that half inch mark. And then line up the raw edges. You can use clips here instead of tape if you want to. Oh my gosh, Coco. And do it all the way across like this. You can see how it is at that half mark there and that's where the tape is turning out. You can go to your machine and baste that now if you wanted to. I'm not going to. I'm going to go ahead and place down some more tape. I'm actually going to go to some smaller tape. One second. This one's too wide if I have any here. The reason I'm going down to a smaller tape is because I don't want it to show this is will be on the right side of it and I don't want it to show the glue to show so I'm going to go down to my 1 8 tape. I buy the 1 8 of an inch tape at Emmeline Bags if anybody's wondering. Okay so on the exterior piece on the right side you're going to put your tape along the top like so again you can use clips here you do not have to use tape take that tape off the 
paper off and then you're going to line them up so these two together like this that's why you want them to be the exact same length if possible and match up that raw edge and stick it down so you're sandwiching the zipper tape in between the lining and the exterior panels. So right now uh, the exterior is right sides together with the right side of with the zipper tape. And this is really sticky tape, holy moly. Line up that raw edge, stick them together. Make sure the panels match up. which mine do, like you can see. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this to my machine and sew these together from zipper panel end to zipper panel end with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then we will come back. All right, so that is done. So now what we want to do, and I sometimes find it easier if you zip up the zipper for this part. So you can see how curving that edge hides that edge so the pull doesn't come off. So this is good. So what we want to do is if you're using cotton, of course you could take this to your ironing board and press this. Make it so you can see, sorry. So you want to push those two uh, panels, wrong sides together, make sure they're nice and taut. I'm actually going to put a clip here. And on the other side, pull them nice and tight, matching up those raw edges again. And put a clip there. Match up the raw edges here and clip all along there. But it is a lot easier when you can press it. I could probably press it from this side if I wanted to. I'm just worried about the leather. So it looks something like that. And then I'm going to take this to my machine. I am going to top stitch right along the zipper here. Actually, top stitch, actually top stitch up this way. So th that's going to put these two sealed in edges together. Top stitch up this way, across the top, and down this side, and then just baste the bottom edge together. So I will go and do that at the machine. I'm also going to go ahead and do the other panel. So what you want to make sure when you do this panel is that they line up for sure with the one we just did. So when they're opened up, they are even like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to top stitch this one. I'm going to go and sew this one and the lining piece on exactly the same way we did this one. Top stitch that and then come back and we will start uh, assembling our lining panels. Okay, so there is our completed zipper panel. So it's all top stitched along the sides in here and basted along the bottom. The next thing we want to do is find the centers of this. So fold it in half. And again, I just do little teeny tiny snips. You can use a marking pen if you want. I just find that I can't lose the snips. So just make sure you're keeping it within the seam allowance, like so. So I got my centers marked there. You want to take your lining panel. I've already done it. You want to make sure you have your center marked here. I also marked my center on the bottom. And you also want to take your lining um, contrast band and find the center bottom of that as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is 
you have to decide uh, how you want your bag to open. Um, I prefer my zipper pocket to be at the back of the bag. So my zipper pull I like to open from the left, so I'm going to put it so the zipper pull opens to the left. So the zipper pull, I have one close, is on the left hand side with both right sides up of the lining panel and the zipper panel. We're going to mark up, mark, match up those centers and clip it. Like so. And down the other side as well. Now you could take this to the machine right now and you can base that, but I'm going to skip that step and do this all together. So then take your uh, top line lining band, match up the centers with the centers of the other two things. So now this is right sides together with the zipper panel. And clip it all together. Like so. And then we're going to sew those three layers together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now, when we are done all that, I better double check this. Yes. So once we've sewed this together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you're going to flip all of this up and then you are going to top stitch with the seams pushing down towards the bottom of the bag. You're going to top stitch along here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So sew them together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Open it up like this with the seams pushing down towards the lining and top stitch along here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then you're going to do the exact same thing with the other side of the zipper panel. So go ahead and do that and then we will come back and work on the gusset. Alrighty, so that is done. We've got them all sewn together. We top stitched it along the inside here. So we've got almost the shell of the lining. So we'll put that aside and what you want to do now is grab your lining gusset pieces and your gusset contrast pieces. Okay. So you want to take one of your gusset pieces course I haven't trimmed my interfacing back yet so we'll just do that quickly okay so what we want to do is we're adding this to the top and that's so when you're looking down in the bag you have um, your contrast your faux leather your cork your vinyl your whatever um, up above the zipper panel so it's like the exterior of the bag on the uh, upper part above the zipper panel and then the lining. So what you want to do is the wide part is at the bottom of the gusset and you're going to take the wider part of the gusset uh, contrast, put it right sides together like so and do the same on the other one. Again, I'm sorry, I should have turned this back before coming on camera, but I forgot. <clears throat> Do the same thing. Oops. So we're going to sew across the top of this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Then you're going to open it up, push the seam towards the bottom of the gusset, and top stitch along this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, making sure that the seam is pointing down. So at the same time while I'm doing that, just because we have already done this with the exterior, is once I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and sew on whoops, my bottom pieces of the gussets, and it's going to go together exactly the same way that our exterior gusset went together. I'm just going to double check the seam allowance to make sure it's three eighths of an inch for that. Um, 
Yes. Okay. So these top gussets, you're doing with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Your bottom one, when you put these right sides together, you're going to do this one with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So go ahead and assemble your whole gusset piece, and then we will put it together with the lining of the bag. All right, we're getting to the home stretch. I go through the lining really fast, mainly because it's almost exactly the same as what we did on the exterior, just a lot less complicated. So here's our gusset pieces. So we've put uh, the contrast there, and I've done the top stitching, done on both sides, and then of course uh, the middle bands as well. So now what we, we want to do is we want to find the center points of these. So the way I do it is I just match up the bottoms the bottom scenes like this where we had them connected and just do snips these two seams here put them together a bit tight to mark your center and then we have already marked our center bottoms on our main lining panels so what we're going to do is it's sometimes easier to have it unzipped so you got to make sure your zipper is hanging on the inside so I'm gonna flip this up like this for now put them right sides together match up that center mark there just like we did with the exterior bring these up now with this you want to make sure that you're matching up this seam here and this seam here and that's just so we have uh, a fluid line of the contrast bands so you want to match up those seams so when they're sewn together they go straight across like that and then of course clip the top do that around the other side it's a little bit awkward because we do have them attached together by a zipper just make sure your zipper stays out of the way match up those seams like so And then evenly distribute the fabric all the way down. If you need to snip into the gusset so it will go around these corners, do so. I'm not as picky with the lining because if there's the odd pucker, it's not going to be seen as the lining. It doesn't happen very often anyways. Oh my goodness, Miss Coco Beans. I swear she will only bark when the camera is running. <laughs> So this is of course a lot easier because there's not as much bulk. There isn't the piping that we have to worry about. So on this back side where the zipper is, we're going to sew all the way around. But when we attach the other side of the gusset, along this bottom right here from about here to here we're going to leave an opening and that opening is going to be for turning the bag so this one side that we're clipping now we will be sewing all the way around and the other side we will be leaving an opening for turning of which we will close up through the zipper pocket in the end which I will show you it's not uh, written that way in the pattern it's just how I like to finish my bags off Doing it that way makes it so you don't have um, that ridge at the bottom of the bag. So what we want to do is we want to start from here with a quarter inch seam allowance. When we get past this contrast piece, we're going to branch out to a half inch seam allowance all the way around. And then just before we're about, about two inches before we're hitting this, we're going to go back down to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And the reason we do that is to make it so the lining is slightly smaller than the exterior of the bag, and then you don't have a baggy lining. So you're going to go ahead and do that. So again, for this one, it's going to be a quarter of an inch, branch out into a half inch all the way around. When you hit about here, go back down to a quarter of an inch. Now, once you're done that, you're going to do the exact same, attach the other side just like we did, matching up our seams and everything, except for from 
for about, I'd say leave about eight inches or so open. So you're gonna sew quarter of an inch of seam allowance, half inch to here, back six back, I always back stitch a couple times. Jump over here, leaving this bottom open, back stitch a couple times, half inch seam allowance until you hit about here, then a quarter inch seam allowance all the way to the back. And what that's gonna do is give us a lining with an opening in the middle. So go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and we will put together the lining and the exterior piece. We are so close to being done. All right, so we have our lining done. So you can see how it looks fluid for the top where my leather is. When you open it up, we have the hole in the lining here for turning. We also have the hole in the pocket for sewing up that lining. Now it's just putting the two together and we are so close to being done, which is a good thing because my camera is almost out of battery. So let's get her done. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the uh, exterior of the bag and we are going to put it inside the lining. So I like my zipper pocket to be at the back of the bag, so I'm making sure that the back of the bag of the exterior is going again right size together with the back of the lining where the zipper pocket is. Make sure all of your fringe is down in the bag because you do not want that to get caught up in your seam that we're about to sew because that would be bad news bears. You don't want that to happen. So make sure all of your, your zipper is out of the way. Make sure all of your fringe is out of the way into the center of the bag. And then you're going to start clipping. I think I'm going to start on the side here, matching up these seams with that, with the, on both panels. Um, opening up the seams if you can. And clipping. The other one with the seam next to it. Open up the seams if you can. Clip it. Oops, I'm sliding. My leather is really slippery, so it isn't the easiest to work with, but I think it's gonna look really nice. So, oops, there goes another clip. Oops, this one slipped out of place. So at this stage, if you need to use a lot of clips, definitely use a lot of clips because you don't want anything shifting where it shouldn't be and then your bag isn't the right shape or the lining is not where it's supposed to be and your seams aren't lining up. You want it to all be perfect at this point. Okay, so I've got those ones clipped. I'm gonna go do the same on the opposite side. Open up your seams. My seams are a little thicker because I didn't cut the foam outside of the seam allowance. And the reason I didn't is because I have a um, industrial machine and I don't really have to worry about that too much. Actually, I didn't have to worry about that on my Juki 2010Q either. It sewed through it just fine. sliding. So you're going to continue along that until it's all clipped together and then we're going to sew them together with I'm double checking my with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So the way I do it is once it's all clipped, I actually sew from the inside of the bag and I turn my bag around this way. I would show you on the machine, but actually all you're going to see is like this because uh, um, the bag gets in the way of the camera. So I'll lay it down like this and I will do a 3 8 of an inch all the way around, spin my bag, spin my bag, 3 8 of an inch all the way around, make sure everything gets caught and then turn it through the opening of the bag on the bottom. So go ahead, do that, finish clipping, sew them together, turn your bag, and then come back and we will talk about the top stitching.
All right, I forgot to mention, I've gone ahead and I have sewed all the way around with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, but I forgot to mention for these curvy parts, we're going to want to do a few little notches just to help around that curve, not cutting into the stitches, just so we'll be able to press it nice and flat around these curves. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my bag. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a workout for me because I have used leather and I've added deck of a light and a whole bunch of fun stuff. So uh, yeah, just wanted to come in and make sure I tell you guys to go ahead and clip small notches into those right, curves. The home stretch. So I pulled it out. It actually wasn't that hard to turn. Um, maybe it's because the leather is so slippery. I don't know. So now what we want to do is prepare for our top stitching. So you want to go make sure all your um, curvy parts are all poking out so they're not stuck inside. Just use your finger or a like right here. There we go. And here. because those rounded parts like to stick in together. Okay, so stick the lining inside the bag. Pushing everything in. Make sure you don't get your zipper in there. So then what you want to do is just kind of go around, finger press everything. I like to clip it to hold it in place. You can see here how it's all kind of stuck inside. So I'm going to reach in through that opening. I'm just going to push that out. Like so. And then massage in. Massage in that beautiful shape that all Shambhala bags seem to have. And I can tell because I have used leather, I'm going to have to use a hump jumper over some of these seams. They're going to be really thick. So yeah, just go through around the whole thing, massaging it all down making those seams nice and tight. And then you're going to take it to your machine, you're going to put it this way, and you're going to top stitch along the top with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. This is one I really wish I had a cylinder arm machine because it would just make my life so much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to show you how we're going to seal up the bottom of the bag. All right, so there we have it. We have it all sewn together. Um, this bag is going to be mine because I'm testing out this leather to see how it holds up. The only thing left to do is we're gonna put our zipper end, you're gonna, however you install it by the instructions onto the end of your zipper and also to seal up this hole in the bottom. So the way you're gonna do that is you're going to pull out your pocket that we have the opening in the bottom Like so, you're going to reach in there and you're going to grab the opening in the bottom of the bag. You're going to pull it through the pocket. And you're going to sew that up with a half inch seam allowance. Stuff that back in the pocket and then sew up the pocket and your bag is done. Then you just attach your crossbody strap and you are good to go. So I seriously have like 10% life on my camera right now. So I'm gonna do that off camera. Again, you're gonna just sew that up, stuff it back in here once it's sewn. Sew up the zipper pocket, put in, put on your straps and you are done. So I hope that this tutorial was uh, helpful and useful. I have never made a fringe bag before. I just love it. There will be more coming. So yeah, that is the Harmony Bag by Shambella Bags. 
and I hope you guys all loved this tutorial. Um, if you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up, uh, leave me a comment, let me know how my sound sounds. Um, I don't know if I'm sold on this microphone. I think I liked my iPhone microphone better. I am not sure. Uh, we will see. I have to, I'm not very good when it comes to change. So yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in. Sorry this pattern or this tutorial got out so late, but it is here now. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Bye.